Hello and welcome to the 32nd episode of the Meet the Media Weapon series. So great American filmmaker Frederick Weisman once said, documentary filmmaking ruins you for life because you learn to be extremely attentive. Our today's guest is someone who is one of India's most prolific and experienced documentary filmmakers. He has been bestowed with the Padma Shri for his contribution to the field and he has also hold National Film Award to his name. One of his films has been has the distinction of being the first and only documentary made by an Indian to be picked up by an international distributor, one of others, and given a theatrical release at par with fiction feature films. At 82, he is still at the helm of the affairs of an organization. So before I present his detailed biography to the audience, let me welcome the eminent documentary filmmaker, Padmshri Awardee, Dr. S. Krishna Swami to the show. Hello. Very warm welcome to the show, Dr. Krishna Swami. It's my pleasure. Such an awe and honor having you on the show today. So Dr. S. Krishna Swami is a reputed documentary and television filmmaker who has devoted his attention primarily to making films on history, heritage, and biography. He won his first national award in 1967 for an industrial film and the special national award to commemorate the Silver Jubilee of Indian Independence in 1973 for his experimental film titled I. He is the recipient of many coveted awards, including the Padma Shri from President of India in 2009 and B. Shantaram Lifetime Achievement Award for documentary films from the Government of India at Mumbai International Film Festival in 2020, Lifetime Achievement Award from U.S. International Film and Video Festival Los Angeles in 2005, Honor Somers Award at the Voting World Foundation in Hawaii in 8, 1987, amongst the other recognitions as well. He founded Krishna Swami Associate Private Limited in 1963 with a vision statement We film to bridge bridges of brotherhood, we shoot to destroy walls of prejudice. And he made about 250 documentaries on a wide span of subjects in English and all Indian languages, and dozens of fiction based TV serials in Hindi and Tamil. His universally known film as Indus Valley to Indira Gandhi, produced in 1976 a four-hour documentary on Indian history distributed by Warner Brothers of Hollywood. His other pioneer productions include films and TV serials on impact of ancient India on Southeast Asia, shot in Indonesia, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. He co-authored a book with Professor Paul Bono titled as Indian Film. It was published by Columbia University Press and Oxford University Press. His autobiography titled as Unlikely Chemistry by Rupa Publications has received rave press reviews. Krishna Murthy got Krishna Swami got his BSc from Madras University in 1957, his master's degree in mass media from Columbia University, New York in 1961, and he has also earned a PhD a decade later. It is such an honor having Dr. Krishna Swami on the show today. May I request Dr. Krishna Swami to kindly deliver his talk? Thank you so much. Well, thank you so very much for uh, uh, for giving me this opportunity to address uh, the elite uh, of the media from a very uh, prestigious institution such as uh, your media center at the Maulana Azad University in Hyderabad. I, I must uh, start by saying that I have a connection with Hyderabad. I am described as a son-in-law of Hyderabad because my wife grew up in uh, Hyderabad, uh, uh, took her, uh, um, uh, was educated there, got her uh, bachelor's degree in Osmania before she proceeded for her master's in Madras University. Uh, now, I, I, um, I intend to uh, make this, uh, as Mr. Rizwan um, um, Ahmad uh, suggested, I intend to make this a very autobiographical talk in terms of uh, my connections with media and uh, the manner in which I have used documentary film to express myself over the last 60 years. So I will make, a, I'll make it a personalized thing, uh, talking about my experience in media of the last six decades. Uh, I went to Columbia University as a student of uh, film and television and worked for a little while in an educational television station. That's where my career started. That was 1960. Now, 
from the from the time i returned to india uh, i started my uh, my own production house which i um, self centeredly called krishna swami associates and uh, uh, private limited and uh, it, that was in 1963 as uh, rizwan ji has said i have made about um, 250 and odd documentaries besides um, about 500 episodes of television serials on a wide range of subjects i must give a moment of introduction to my style of functioning as a documentary filmmaker i began to make documentaries because i had a passion to convey certain ideas certain messages cover certain topics and therefore when i of course i have made many sponsored films for uh, the government as well as for private enterprise but that that became a vehicle to gather some capital to start with to do exactly what i want to do so uh, the my challenge started when i was a student in new york when they screened an american documentary which was very derogatory to india and i i uh, i was offended i went up on the dais and said that this is a very uh, gross misrepresentation of india as a country and uh, my professor who later became a very close friend and a co-author of a book which we wrote together uh, he uh, uh, got up on the dais and said now you convert your anger to a very productive experience of making a film on indian history and indian culture and uh, let's start there so that that was a very important inspiration a message which uh, i took very seriously and um, it became an obsession but for about for about 12 years from that point i could not afford to launch a project of that magnitude in the meantime i had done uh, uh, films uh, which won Uh, an uh, an industrial film which won a national award and uh, my film titled i which got me the uh, special national award to commemorate the silver jubilee of independence now um i was gathering courage even as um, people began to recognize that this fellow is capable of doing something so i went ahead and borrowed from a bank whatever uh, savings i had uh, uh, the house that i had bought and so on i mortgaged i gave us uh, security and uh, that wasn't enough so i borrowed from private money lenders at usurious rates of interest and launched my film history it was uh, um, um i uh, the, the the production started in 1973 and i could i took 3 years to complete it because it involved traveling all over the country going to all historical locations and so on and before that i had spent quite a bit of time some years in doing research now when um, when i reached the point uh, that i was uh, almost completing the production i started trying to market it i was duly warned by well wishers friends and relatives and everybody that you are doing something which is um, in which you are going to uh, tear your shirt because um, this is not something that is commercially viable it is unlikely to be seen by a large audience and uh, you may not get even distribution the only person who stood by my side at that time and that was a very important moral backing for me was my wife dr mohana who was working for her phd at that time at the madras university she uh, she said well take the chance you're not all that old not to take a chance so if you don't realize your dream now when when will you so i started working on that and took all the risk and uh, completed the production in 1976 i wanted a star name because how can you have a star name in a in a documentary i uh, i had uh, it was written by me researched by me uh, narrated by me 
uh, and so on. So I, of course, I had a technical crew. I had my cameraman and so on and so forth. But then um, it suddenly occurred to me that I must have a, a, one of the greatest music directors of India. So I thought of Salil Chaudhary. Salil Da was known to me for several years because uh, uh, my father was the vice chairman of the Indian People's Theatre Association, of which Salil Da was an office bearer. And later on, I interacted quite a bit with Salil Da when I was writing my book on Indian cinema. So uh, the natural choice was Salil Da because I was his fan anyway. So I, um, I called him and said, would you like to take a look at what I have done? And then take your decision whether you want to do the music, background music for this. Because after all, there were no songs and dances or anything, except, uh, you know, traditional uh, a few songs, one song by M.S. Subhalakshmi and so on. Now, uh, he, he, um, he came, he saw the film and he was in tears. He said, I, I'm in love with this film. I want to do this music. Well, that became a, an emotionally important point for me. Uh, we took quite some time recording the background music, the original background score. And uh, then the film was ready for screening to potential distributors. Uh, well, I tried with the half a dozen top names and uh, nobody responded. In fact, uh, they all sympathized with me for having taken this um, huge risk, uh, which may not result in anything. Then there was a, a very famous film distributor in uh, Mumbai, Bombay at those days who said, well, you deserve the Bharat Ratna for this, but not commercial distribution, because we are unlikely to collect any money from the common people. Anyway, I was not heartbroken. I continued my effort. Then I, I, I thought I should approach the international distributors. I approached a few, and I must say, uh, suddenly luck turned in my favor. The, the um, Warner Brothers, saw the film, liked it in one screening, finalized the uh, contract, and we sat with them, and I said, uh, so on and so forth, and uh, they fixed the release of, uh, for December 10, 1976. And then, um, well, I think it's about time that you see extracts from this film before I go on further to what else I have done. Old friend, Mr. Krishnaswamy whom we affectionately call Babu. The unique notes of uh, Babu's effort has been that the day one when an objective before him. He did not go into filmmaking or money making. He made those films which were historically important, culturally significant, and also leaving a method for the nation. The single most ambitious and most expensive non-fiction film ever produced here. The first Indian film to be distributed under the internationally renowned banner of Warner Brothers, Indus Valley to Indira Gandhi, on the 5,000-year drama of Indian history and culture, filmed in fabulous monuments of long-forgotten empires, as well as in living palaces of recent history. An encyclopedic sweep on the diverse facets of India, the religions, the wars, conflicts, intrigue, our abject poverty, and our heroic efforts to solve our problems, our moral strengths and weaknesses. Indus Valley to Indira Gandhi is Krishnaswamy's magnum opus, an epic drama of the Indian people. Knowledge explodes. It changes your perception of India. Not everyone was charmed by Sir Kenneth Clark's TV series, Civilization. What put them off was Sir Kenneth's implication that the Mediterranean basin has been the main cradle of human culture and progress. Krishnaswamy's film proves a corrective to the cultural myopia. In the medieval period, the position of the widow deteriorated. The widow had to remain like a slave in the family of the husband's household. Jewelry, perfumes, flowers, and even colored dress were all prohibited for her. 
In some communities, she had to shave her head. Her sight was an illuminous. Even today, widows assemble from all over India, in particular from Bengal, and reside in the dark holes of Vrindavan, the city of Krishna. To the Hindu woman, her husband is her palpable god. Being mortals, their gods are dead. And so today, they are godless, forsaken and forgotten. The director unearths layer after layer, the soul of India, the spirit that lies beneath the sediment, a moving powerful and thorough piece of work, an objective and painstaking odyssey. Attempts what no filmmaker, Indian or foreign, has so far attempted. Bond in conception and execution, credible and of absorbing interest, there is not a dull moment. Dr. Krishna Swami's uh, in, in this valley to Indira Gandhi, uh, in those days used to be uh, the stock for all of us. All of us had to see it, should see it, see it as many times for you to know what history which has not been taught to you. That was the first ever well-documented movie-based history narrative which was made in a fashion in which all of us could see it and benefit from it. So that was a great service rendered and uh, those are the kind of things I think India has always been proud of. Well, uh, that made a big impact. But every coin has got two sides. The um, This film was not accepted for telecast by Doordarshan, which was the only television channel in India in those days, initially. But when they found that uh, Warner Brothers had acquired it, it, may, it looked as though they had a, um, an international stamp of approval. So they changed their mind and uh, they telecast it not once, not twice, but several times. Uh, and now, um, I had in the meantime started doing other projects. It was not practical to do everything on an unsponsored manner. Of course, I undertook sponsored productions. Uh, several agricultural films, industrial films, and then films on great educational institutions like Bits Pelani, Tyagaraja College in Madurai, and so on and so forth. And we also made uh, industrial films uh, uh, to uh, major industries, both in uh, South India, as well as in um, the west of India and the north of India. I've probably done uh, less work in uh, the eastern region, except for projects like Indus Valley to Indira Gandhi, which I had conceived on my own. Now, um, when uh, uh, we had to move on, by that time, my wife, who had already been an enthusiast of my work, the circumstances developed in a manner that she changed the track from science and became a documentary filmmaker. She joined my company. In fact, she became the chairperson of the company and started making films. She made a film on um, the status of women in Tamil Nadu, titled it as uh, 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 how they left hell behind, because he was, she was facing true stories of people, uh, of women who had made it uh, from a uh, very difficult, and in fact, uh, dealing primarily with the uh, uh, lower economic classes. It got her an award, uh, the first prize at the International University Forum, uh, uh, which met in Helsinki. And um, she uh, started doing other films besides this. Although the first one she did was for her own satisfaction. She continued making films. Um, and, uh, you know, in the next segment of a few documentaries, uh, extracts from which I plan to show, we intend to show you something that we did together on uh, the Ganga Action Plan. With the dealing with the cleaning of the Ganges and uh, reducing the pollution levels in the river. Later, um, several other projects, 
Now, two, three things which I, from which I've chosen clips to be shown to you include, we have made uh, uh, four films to mark the 40th anniversary of Indian independence. These dealt with four different aspects of uh, independent India, rather the struggle for independent India. But they, uh, they, uh, one of them dealt with the role of Indian cinema in uh, 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 propagating the, the struggle for freedom during the freedom struggle and become, becoming a proactive element of the freedom struggle itself. We also made at that time a, a, a film called, uh, um, well, the, you are going to see extracts from that. So let me not repeat what you are likely to see there. लाखों करोड़ों गंगा भक्तों ने श्रद्धांत होकर भक्ति भाव से स्नान किया है और इसकी सुखद स्मृतियां आजीवन अपने साथ संजोए ले गए हैं पिछले कई दशकों से हर की पौड़ी के इन पवित्र स्नान घाटों पर आने वाली पावन गंगा को तीन नालियां प्रदूषित करते आ रही थी माय विडो शुड डाई ऑन माय फ्यूनरल फायर दैट्स माय वाइफ्स ऑनर दैट्स माय कन्विक्शन माय सोसाइटी बिलीव्स इन इट who are these sacrilegious fellows trying to prevent holy satan you devils you cannot stop a woman's rightful path to heaven sir recently i listened to a man called ram mohan roy he said and i agree we can show your wife a better path to heaven than through sati mark the golden jubilee of indian independence krishna swami associates made India 5555. The White House chose to screen it for the American President Bill Clinton as part of his orientation to visit India. Conceptually brilliant, eloquently brought out, viewing it is a rewarding experience. A brilliant exposition of India through the ages, a source of education for anybody. As a pioneer historian of Indian cinema and as co author of the authoritative book Indian Film. Krishna Swami has also made documentaries on the socio-political impact of Indian films before independence. The high watermark of Kesu Brahmanyam's creativity and expression of his nationalist sentiment, supporting the freedom struggle, as well as supporting women's empowerment and the welfare of the deprived classes, was his Tamil film Tyagabhumi, based on a story by the celebrated Tamil writer Kalki. கல்வியும் நாகரிகமும் நிறைந்த இந்நாளில் தேசமெங்கும் சுதந்திரம் சுதந்திரம் என்று முழங்கிக் கொண்டிருக்கும் இக்காலத்தில் ஓர் பெண் பேதை சட்டத்தில் பேரால் கொடுமைக்கு ஆளாக்கலாமா புருஷன் மனைவியை தள்ளி வைத்தால் மனைவி கோரக்கூடிய பாத்தியது என்ன ஜீவனாம்சம் தானே அதே மாதிரி நானும் இவருக்கு ஜீவனாம்சம் கொடுக்க தயாராயிருக்கிறேன் ஆனால் நான் இவருடன் மனைவியாக சேர்ந்து வாழ மாத்திரம் சம்மதிக்க மாட்டேன் the cultural artistic geniuses like krishna swami interpret uh well uh, there there is a, a reference to k subramanyam's film um that is a reference to my father who was a pioneer of south indian cinema he made a film called jaga bhoomi in 1939 from which a few extracts you saw the uh, i used those extracts to talk about uh, the role of indian cinema during the freedom struggle because that film was banned it was one of the few films that were uh, banned during the british rule nobody dared make a film uh, advocating freedom in the uh, in the colonial era so the uh, um, i had used extracts from that and extracts from dr kotney's ki amar kahani by Shanta Ram and a few other films, which were all period films before independence, but which had a, a streak of nationalism and uh, support for uh, uh, the nationalist cause. Now, uh, going on to the next phase, uh, um, I'm uh, uh, I have been obsessed with the communal harmony. for a very from a very early days my very early days so in um, the 19 uh, 80s 
I thought of making a film. Now, I, let me explain to you my modus operandi in uh, making these films. Now, this, this is applicable to several later films, some of the earlier films, and so on. That is, I think of an idea. I want to make a film on this, and I try and locate a sponsor, explaining this is what I have done, I want money for this, and so on. Sometimes I get the money, sometimes I get the backing, sometimes I don't. When I don't get the backing, I do it on my own. Now, we have made, uh, for instance, a cartoon called With Apologies to Tagore, which is a, a spoof on the state of the nation in India, uh, contrasting it with the dream of Rabindranath Tagore and his uh, uh, Where the Mind is Without Fear. We uh, made some such films uh, later, uh, you know, uh, mm, without going into de details of all those productions, I'll come to what I'm showing you. This, uh, this film on communal harmony, I wanted to interview the, uh, some of the major religious leaders of the country, including Mother Teresa, uh, the Dalai Lama, the chief Kazi of Tamil Nadu, and the head of the Ramakrishna Mutt in Belur, West Bengal, and others. Um, um, I got the moral cooperation of an institution associated with the C. Subramanyam. He uh, uh, cooperated with me. This is before he got his Bharat Ratna, much before, in fact. And uh, mm, uh, he was actually uh, not in office uh, either, but he supported due to his moral influence on various sources. And, uh, you know, I, would, I could get the uh, appointments and so on, and a little bit of uh, a kind of a, uh, a subsidy for uh, the production. Of course, the film cost much more than what the subsidy was, but we had no regrets. Uh, this film... Um, I titled it as a reality behind religion. It has, again, a, a cartoon-like opening. A, and I, you know, since that opening runs to several minutes, I don't, I, I don't have the time to screen it now, but I'll tell you what, it, what the story is. A certain man in a certain planet is uh, uh, doing penance, and he wants to see God. God appears before him and says, uh, uh, gives him his, uh, his blessings and boon and say, and he wants salvation, which is granted. This fellow then rushes the, uh, to the earth because a representative of uh, the devil comes and tells him, this little imp, tells this uh, fellow the, who has successfully seen God, uh, that, you know, I am a, I am the a devil's representative. You see what is happening to you. So he rushes to the devil himself, goes to the netherworld, uh, comic scenes, and then he meets the devil. And then he says, look at what is happening. This man is, uh, has found the truth. Now that one chap has found God and found the truth, he will, uh, you know, completely demolish our devil's kingdom. And the devil t tells him, uh, uh, calm down, young man. We have had this experience for many centuries. And we have tackled it very efficiently in the past. So what happens is that he converts the priests and the, uh, uh, the heads of these institutions to his way of thinking. He uh, infiltrates into all the religions. And that's how religions get uh, deteriorated, uh, contaminated by the forces of the devil. Now, that, that story takes a few minutes. And then we go on to interviewing these major religious leaders. And I'll uh, show you a few of those extracts. Krishna Swami personally interviewed several living religious icons for his film, Reality Behind Religion emphasizing the message of communal harmony. 
you will find that the Quran does not injunct enmity between religions. In one verse in the Quran it said, Kulya ayyuhal kafiruna la abdu ma tabduna wala antum abduna ma abad wala ana abduna ma abadtum wala antum abduna ma abad lakum deenakum wala yadeen tell people who do not believe in me that you are worshipping a god we are worshipping a god you are not likely to worship our god we are not likely to worship of your God, your religion for you and our religion for us. Neither their religion nor a true Muslim looks down upon another religion, nor is he injuncted by his own religion to be enemy of another religion. We need to assimilate this great teaching derive inspiration from all these great teachings and thus build up a country where religion is free. Everybody is free to follow one's own religion and live in harmony and friendship with people of other religions. That is the ideal we have to achieve the shortest time possible. The more people understand the truth, the more they will become centers of peace and harmony and friendship. Krishna in the Gita iterated this idea and that is a very famous verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Ye yatha maam pravattante tam stathaiva bhajamyaham namavatma anuvartante manushya partha sabasha Through whatever paths men come unto me Krishna is speaking as the incarnation of the divine. Through whatever paths men come unto me, I receive them through those very paths. All paths eventually, Arjuna, come unto me only. I have been planning certain projects which could not materialize immediately. Now, uh, at the time of making Indus Valley to Indira Gandhi, that was way back in the 1970s, I came across a lot of material in the museums and in the uh, libraries and so on, material about ancient India's influence on Southeast Asia. And I wanted to make a, 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 a film or a series, something on that. The intensity of that got, got bigger when I was in Singapore making TV serials, entertainment as well as uh, documentary, non-feature. Uh, non and uh, uh, that was for a short period uh, on a special assignment for uh, a television station in Singapore. And my, uh, my, I, I was accompanied by my whole crew and we set, set up a shop there and started making films. I used all the spare time to move around and uh, do some research on that region, uh, talk to people, professors and so on, uh, about Southeast Asia. Because I, uh, I had the intention to do something in Southeast Asia. Um, well, my concepts had crystallized, but I couldn't proceed further because it uh, looked as though, and it was true later, as I found, that the most crucial uh, country uh, to be looked at from that perspective was Cambodia. And Cambodia at that time was not in peace. There was internal strife. There was a, um, um, there was a lot of atrocity, uh, inhuman uh, treatment of uh, its own citizens and so on. And one had to wait longer before Cambodia became free from such nuisance and, uh, and became a free country. Then I started pursuing that all over again. 
and uh, I managed to convince uh, Doordarshan to sponsor this, to underwrite the cost of making this serial. It took a few years for them to be convinced. In the meantime, I also talked to a few people abroad, and uh, some of them took interest because it was uh, uh, rather um, so financially huge project. It may not been, we have been huge from the perspectives of commercial cinema, but it was certainly huge from the perspectives of make, a documentary filmmaker. So I, I wanted to have more than one project, and I could manage to get that. Then we launched this film, this serial called Indian Imprints, and also a feature-length documentary called A Different Pilgrimage. Now, uh, we had fantastic experience producing this. Mona and I had gone on an initial trip for research. We spent um, quite a bit of time in all these five countries, that is Indonesia, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam, to study the place, meet the scholars, visit the locations which we should film, uh, the monuments and so on. And then we went back with our crew, which included my two daughters, our cameraman, the celebrated cinematographer, Madhu Ambath, and uh, a few other people. We also took local help in every country to complete the uh, film unit in each place. Uh, so we, um, in, the, in the process, we, well, it was uh, spending about uh, 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 three years in the project to, uh, to complete the, uh, the entire filming and bring it out. So we will be seeing a small extract uh, a trailer kind of thing on what we have done in Southeast Asia. Simultaneously, we were making these other films. Then the parallel development during that period was that both my daughters had become well-trained uh, Bharatanatyam dancers with, with uh, interest in research in dance. And, uh, you know, well, one incident will illustrate that they had uh, de developed a, a status of their own as dancers. Uh, <clears throat> when... Um, uh, uh, President Abdul Kalam was uh, at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. He organized a, a show for their dance and uh, uh, invited uh, the uh, embassies, the ambassadors and so on to the show. Now, the, uh, so I uh, wanted them to make a serial on uh, Indian classical dance and Indian folk dance. So Mona, under Mona's supervision, Lata and Gita directed this uh, 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 huge serial with about 200 dancers participating. Uh, and um, there were two serials put together, running into about uh, 30 odd episodes. And it also got them, got them a, an international award. Now, um, I intend in this next segment of the extract, I intend to show you our work in Southeast Asia and uh, the extracts from the serials concerning dance, Indian dance, both classical and folk. Somebody said that if you want to create history, write something worth reading about or do something worth writing about. Dr. Krishnaswamy read both. Expanding on the theme of Southeast Asia, Krishnaswamy made Indian Imprints, a highly acclaimed 18-part TV serial. That smoke is from a crater of the Sikidang volcano behind me, right in the geographic center of the Java Island. One Kaundinya came sailing and married Soma, a naked local princess, on my shore. He gave her clothes to wear and children to bear. They both founded a country here called Funan. On Thursday, the 25th of May 2006, 
we were filming in this Brahmanan temple. Unfortunately, within 48 hours, the city of Yogyakarta and these surrounding regions experienced a tragic catastrophe, a disastrous earthquake that has resulted in a tragic loss of many lives in this region, reflected by this damage to the Brahma Chandi at Prambana. Taprom, meaning ancestral Brahman, a Buddhist monastery built by Jayavarman, is today a unique monument which portrays a kind of clasping or embrace between stone and wood in grim hostility. A wrestling match between a monument and trees where each round is measured not in minutes, not even in years, but in centuries. Krishna Swami's team also produced two art-based TV serials totaling 33 episodes, both of which have won awards at the U.S. International Film and Video Festival. took on a number of socio-political uh, issues. <clears throat> we made a film on electoral reforms uh, uh, and the need for it, as well as suggesting patterns uh, by discussing the subject with several experts and eventually writing my own script. Uh, I, um, I had, in particular, I had the expertise of Mr. Jay Prakash Narayan a social activist from Hyderabad who um, had done a deep study of the subject of electoral reforms. So we made a film on the electoral system, comparing the electoral system in various countries, in, um, in the West, East, North and South. And comparing the modus operandi, the, the, how the elections are conducted and how effective they are and what are the uh, uh, um, strengths and weaknesses of these different systems of electing your rulers. And we well, showed uh, what is happening in India also. Um, we, we made uh, several films related to history. Like, for instance, one of the things that comes to my mind is a, a film on the history of banking in India. You will be surprised, uh, at least some of you will be surprised to know that banking as an industry started more or less as a byproduct of the Sipai mutiny or as the first war of independence, as India would call it, in the uh, mid-19th century. It, uh, um, because uh, uh, a private banker had financed the, uh, the Nawabs and Kings to uh, fight against the East India Company and throw them out. And he was financing them in the hope that after they succeed, he will be compensated. And, uh, uh, you know, his uh, investments paid back. But then um, when we all know history, they, they didn't succeed. And uh, the East India Company soldiers promptly found his banker and hanged him. Uh, that is the beginning of banking industry in India. Of course, it, uh, it has come one and a half centuries from then, a little more. Now, uh, we, uh, we made a film on this history, bringing the his banking industry to the present. It did not talk about a particular industry, but we had some incidents like uh, there was a fellow called Arbuthnot, a British banker who uh, had started a bank in India and, uh, and uh, sometime in 1901 or 1902, he uh, took away all the deposits from his uh, uh, clients and boarded a ship from the Madras Harbour to escape to England with the booty. 
uh, now some responsible citizens of madras had this uh, clue to this they went and stopped the ship got him out of the ship handed him over to the police and uh, uh, you know they could save at least part of the money that was uh, with him if this fellow was eventually tried and sent to jail in london but in uh, uh, in chennai it became an important uh, beginning because the local people got together and founded indian bank and uh, the the, the uh, so we have uh, we have traced history of all kinds on on commerce on banking on um, sports in india on music in india uh, uh, and uh, so on and so forth anyway uh, let me show you a, a, a bit of uh, uh, what um, uh, what we had done in the title of uh, who loses when india wins one of the things about the work of uh, dr krishna swami is that uh, he is not superficial in his uh, sweep may be wide ranging he took on an astonishing variety of topics big big issues spanning the economic social political cultural aesthetic and indeed literary dimensions finally i want to salute the independence and integrity of uh, this man of creative distinction he made films on constitutional themes like electoral reforms hypothetically if there are 100 voters in your constituency and out of these on an average 60 turn out to vote often the candidate who gets 23 out of these 60 votes gets elected because the balance 37 are split between all the opposing candidates this would mean that the elected representative really represents only 23% of the total electorate the balance 77% have no voice to represent them in the next 5 years uh well um expanding on that the, uh, we we have done other films like that um uh, we made a film exclusively on the role of uh, tamil nadu in the freedom struggle uh, um you know there were uh, there were people who were against the freedom struggle locally and uh, they uh, uh they had later come to power in tamil nadu after independence as late as 1944 45 they passed a resolution uh stating that in the unlikely and unfortunate event of india becoming a free country we in tamil nadu would like to remain under the benevolent british rule so uh, well this history was completely um uh, hidden Pe- people didn't know about it at all so it was important for me to uh, get into that uh, it's it's interesting the way it was dealt with and um we made a docu drama on this uh, uh, it was a very successful uh, uh, drama a successful uh, serial well uh, somebody went to court to say that it was not uh, uh, historically valid that it was uh, 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 an imagination of dr krishna swami so there was a case in the court so the high court gave a judgment in my favor and in fact the judge announced in the open court that the only favor that this uh, litigant has done to me is that i have no time for television and i may have missed it uh, because it has come to my court i have been compelled to watch this wonderful serial anyway the um, we have made several other television serials uh, quite a bit of fiction and of course documentaries and uh, although we have in the earlier years in the 1980s and 90s 90s i was directing most of them that work has been taken over by 
my elder daughter Lata, making several serials and uh, documentaries, and my younger daughter Geeta, who uh, spends only part time with us, and therefore she has managed to direct some serials. Uh, among the serials which Geeta has directed are uh, a 52 episode serial called Visalam, which is written by me, the story, dialogue, and so on, and uh, where I trace the 100 year story of a family from 1900 to 2000. It is so, so in a way, it traces the social history of uh, Tamil Nadu. It was a very successful serial, uh, telecast three or four times. We also made, I have no time to do extracts from all of that. Uh, now we have, um, we have also been making documentaries. Lata has made her own um, serial based on some well-known stories um, and uh, uh, including uh, one by uh, the celebrated writer Vasanthi. We, uh, she made uh, um, a film, a documentary on the life of deaf and dumb children, which got her an international recognition in Cannes. Uh, she's also made other films uh, and is I'm gradually, um, I should say 82 as I am now, uh, I can afford to have been uh, uh, faster in that transfer of uh, work, but I have been probably selfish enough to hold on to my work uh, a great deal. And now, of course, it's, it's, uh, most of it is done by the next generation. The Gen Next knows what the Gen Next wants. So that is the right thing to do under um, Dr. Mohana's supervision. Now, let me show you uh, the sixth uh, clipping, which, uh, which uh, gives you a bird's eye view of all these various things. Nalladur Vinay, based on Sahitya Academy Award winner Jaya Kantan's novel. <laughs> நான் எழுதிய நாவலை விடவும் இதன் படமாக்கம் எனக்கு திருப்தி தருகிறது இது ஒரு சிறப்பு அம்சம்தான் சக்தி some of jay kantan's chosen short stories made in hindi with a southern ambience is samman mein main aap se sirf ek shabd sunna chahta hu sach ya jhoot upasana 22 episode hindi tv serial based on the tamil twin epics lappadigaram and mani meghalai <laughs> तुम्हारी आंखों में राज सी मत भरा है लज्जा करो राजन लज्जा करो स्वामी विवेकानंद इन 52 ड्रामाटाइज्ड टेलीविजन एपिसोड्स गेटिंग अ ह्यूज व्यूअरशिप Sisters and Brothers of America. I vividly remember those wonderful days I spent at home, waking up to a beautiful morning in the garden and getting ready for school. Well, they call it a hostel, but to me, it was home. Oh yes, and by the way, I am a person with speech and hearing impairment. <clears throat> well, I lose the sense of time if you give me time more and more. And now I, uh, I'm very grateful to Manu again for this opportunity and I uh, thank Mr. Rizwan Ahmad in particular, request him to carry on, carry on with the rest of whatever needs to be done. Uh, thank you Dr. S. Krishna Swami for such a scintillating session uh, today. Uh, this has really enriched uh, all of us and having got a glimpse of your work and heard the stories uh, that go with your films, I can safely conclude 
uh, that you epitomizes the spirit of a quintessential documentary filmmaker your muse has always been india uh, through the years uh, you have tried to seek and discover its uh, resplendent uh, yet diverse facets and evolving of avatars as you captured them through your camera for posterity as contemporary history the facts tales stories fables of people and places politics and opinions live happenings and reports forms and pageants art and culture a repertoire so magnificent and well rounded that one could easily call you documentary filmmaker of the nation uh, i thank you once again for joining us today and reach, and reaching us so before we sign off for today i have just one question because na show is just going to touch one hour now uh, uh, you had such a wonderful you know documentary filmmaker and and as a uh television uh, producer and director you had such a wonderful career in in documentary filmmaking uh don't you think you know uh, this you know you your basically fore has been you know this heritage and culture you have you have sort of you know epitomized the you know this john of filmmaking especially heritage and culture of uh, filmmaking uh, documentary filmmaking in india uh have you ever tried or you don't you think you know we as you know uh, we i i also belong to media i have seen you know much of uh, cinema on, on on cultural heritage uh do you think you know we like uh, in this genre of filmmaking uh this scenario could have been better as far as you know this uh, uh, heritage and cultural filmmaking is concerned what's your take on that are you talking of feature films i'm talking about feature films i was was just wondering you know you have made more than 250 documentaries and television serials i was expecting you know if you would have done wonderful job as as a uh, if you would have produced a film on cultural heritage also feature film uh well um in a sense everything uh, is culture including the culture of making um uh, let's say culture of making an industrial empire culture of making the shoes the culture of making hand looms the culture culture is such a wide thing that you can incorporate the whole universe in that and and therefore i am not uh, well i'm not averse to the idea of making uh, films based on stories in fact i have made one feature film which is a uh, which is a, uh, a salute to my father's spirit of freedom he he made this uh, tagabumi 1939 which was banned by the british i made i uh, had a remake of that in hindi uh, to mark the 50th anniversary of the ban of that original and that was uh, really, uh, it was a telefilm released on uh, the national network of doordarshan in 1989 because the original was done in 1939 and now the uh, i uh, it was a very successful remake and has review, uh, received wide reviews apart from that you, uh, you know when you go through this uh, almost everything looks like culture you see the um, in indonesia for instance the manner in which the hindus and islamic uh, uh, people uh, have uh, managed to survive with great uh, friendship is a model for the whole world they have the uh, largest hindu sculpture on based on the bhagavad gita theme the largest uh, stone sculpture on on a hindu theme anywhere in the world is in indonesia The, but don't think that is uh, made some 500 years ago or 300 years ago it was made when uh, sukarno became the president of uh, uh, free In indonesia it was installed in his regime and uh, and therefore it is a it is a symbol of interreligious harmony and culture and so on i think that is the culture that we need to develop uh, uh, for that matter anywhere in the world that is a culture we need to develop in america where there is a, a, a racial um, discrimination even today where there is a, a conflict of uh, man to man this is the um, uh, well I, i i will not uh, stop talking about this 
now we have gone through a lot of hardship in these in making these films we were caught in indonesia in a um, in a storm and then in a earthquake the earthquake uh, made us nomads for seven days but we used that uh, seven days by being nomads to discover new locations <laughs> our our uh, uh, the flight was uh, the, the we couldn't take our connecting flight because the airport was damaged so we had to re- take a rickety bus across the whole of the java island from one end to the other and uh, in the process we discovered places which we you know which we may, we may have missed otherwise completely and discovered um, beautiful locations as well as um, telling history which is not very much written about at all now all that is culture therefore True. culture uh, 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 by no means i am saying i am against uh, the the glorification of uh, feature films of uh, i i am uh, an admirer of satyajit ray i am an admirer of uh, several of such uh, filmmakers of uh, adur of uh, sham benegal uh, some of whom are very good close friends of mine i sent my son for training with the uh, sham benegal before he went to america where he settled down now the the um, what i am talking about is that as of uh, when i started writing i started writing about cinema i wrote a column in the illustrated weekly of india which was the widest uh, paper widest known paper in india at that time it, uh, times of india group publication and um, i wrote on 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 cinema and i wrote about feature films like uh, reviewed uh, the major films of the country now um, so it, i i have been as much involved and interested in feature films but the documentary format became my uh, passion mm-hmm. it became my um, i i preferred this passion any time I, I, because i could narrate what i wanted to say without any compromise and i could uh, put it across in my own way it doesn't mean that one stream of thinking is wrong while the other is right there's nothing like that every uh, every art form has its strengths as well as weaknesses sure. uh, let's uh, let's go bo- more by the strengths there are strengths of the documentary film this can never be applied in a feature very well said there are strengths of the documentary which can never be applied in in cinema absolutely well said and being the student of media i understand you know those those nitty gritties you know how does documentary documentary sort of you know overpower sometime you know feature films and you can convey your thoughts you know far better than uh, in documentary format uh, than in than a feature film so i i thank you once again for kindly joining us today uh, we, i need to close this show uh, here only because we have already crossed one hour now and uh, i i thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart you know taking uh, your time uh, for more than one hour today and and delivering such a wonderful talk and enriching the audience and all of us uh, uh, on the only documentary filmmaker on your work as well thank you so much uh, for joining us today dr swami it's been my pleasure thank you thank you uh thanks very much audience uh, uh, enjoying uh, uh, this brilliant uh, uh, talk by dr s krishna swami today uh, he had reached us on you know various facets of uh, documentary filmmaking and we saw you know few of his brilliant work though it's very difficult to showcase you know whole because he has shot more than you know 250 documentaries and television serials it's very difficult to sort of you know uh, uh, summarize his work in one hour show so you need to sort of uh to to watch his more work i need i think you need to contact him personally or maybe you can contact me i can connect uh, uh you with the uh, dr ash krishna sami uh, we need to see his work uh, is it carries lot of lot of weight and you know lot of uh, education and academics uh, uh, to all of us uh, not only for the aesthetics and narratives of the documentary filmmaking but also you know to to understand india in, in a better way Uh, our culture our religions uh, our heritage uh, i think the way dr s krishna swami has done uh, nobody has done i think uh, uh, especially in in this part of the world so i thank you once again for joining us uh, next week we will uh, be back with yet another media veterans uh, so till then take uh, good care of you thank you so much